have a really simple story to tell this evening, and I haven't done any notes, I don't have a presentation. I just thought I would talk off the cuff because I don't believe that my story um, is any different to other stories that you'll hear, and I don't believe that I am special, um, and my story is special. You know, I consider myself a fairly normal person. I moved here to Canberra seven years ago. Um, it was somewhere where I wanted to move to, which may, probably makes me a little bit different, but I wanted to come to Canberra. And my partner and I came here, and we rented a unit for a couple of years in Braddon, and we're paying $350 a week. And I said to him that, uh, to me, uh, the rent was just a ridiculous price, and I wanted to, and to me it was dead money. And if we we're going to pay $350 a week, surely it couldn't be all that much more to go out and purchase something. <coughs> uh, he subsequently got transferred overseas, so it came so much easier for me to make that decision myself. So I decided I would go, you know, hunting for a property. Um, I soon realised that on a single wage here in Canberra, I couldn't afford a house. Um, Except if I lived out in the, in, in the suburbs and seeing I had made a decision myself that I didn't want to buy a car because deep down inside I try to think that I am environmentally conscious. You know, I actually love the bus service here in Canberra. I know, again, I'm one of the few, <laughs> but I love using the buses here. So I wanted to be somewhere close to a bus line. I decided I wanted to be somewhere that was inner south or inner north, somewhere that was fairly accessible um, to the things that I did, you know. Uh, so out I went, and I used to go out every second Saturday afternoon, and I would go around the open homes, which was somewhat depressing, um, because either they were incredibly old and incredibly dirty, or they were very new and very expensive. And I soon realised that I couldn't afford a house, and I couldn't afford a two-bedroom apartment um, because the basic price for a one-bedroom apartment um, in, in a brand new facility started at $300, $325,000 went out from there. Um, so whilst that was a little disheartening, I am an optimist by nature and it wasn't going to put me off. So I continue to hunt around and I really, you know, I'm not a difficult person to keep happy. I'm a fairly simple person. Had to have a roof, four walls. Um, Oh, and a veranda, because I come from Queensland. And despite whatever the weather is, I still sit on the veranda. So I wanted a veranda. Um, you know, it didn't have to be, you know, the enormous size that we have in Queensland, but it had to be large enough for me to put a table out there and have friends over and have barbecues. So eventually I found somewhere I wanted. Um, it was in Braddon, so it fit, you know, all the criteria. It was a unit block that was 12 years old. Uh, but it had a wonderful veranda. And when I walked into this unit, it was priced at $295,000. 12 years old, one bedroom. It was painted this most delightful tone of pink. And it had the matching pink curtains and the pink and green pull across curtains. And the linoleum on the floor in the kitchen matched the laminate on the bench, which was this nice pink and green and rust. It was just, it was stunning. You know, it, it was, I, I believe, the original, you know, painting that had been in this unit. However, I walked inside and, and loved it immediately. You know, there's no saying what women, how women make up their lives. But I knew it had the structure and I knew it had the brand and it was what I wanted. You know, 52 square metres of unit and an extra 21 square metres of veranda. So it more than exceeded what I was looking for. Um, so then I, I probably did it the wrong way around. I then, because by that stage I thought I was never going to find anything I could afford. You know, I wasn't working for the government. I work for, in the not-for-profit in the charity sector. I don't earn the same amount of money as I could earn if I, worked in, if I work in the public service. It's a choice I've made on a personal level that I would prefer to give back to the community in, in my work. Um, so I have avoided um, the public service, uh, you know, and, and for that reason only. Um, I like to work for community organisations and give back. Um, so I went and, and found a mortgage broker and he sat down and told me that he would give me $400,000. And I thought, oh my God, all my dreams have come true. 
I could have afforded that two bedroom at Griffith. But then if I work out, you know, if I'm earning $80,000 a year and I get a $400,000 mortgage, it means that 70% of my salary each week is going toward my mortgage. And I'm a girl. I need shoes, I need handbags, you know, I need peri cotton jackets, despite the price of them. You know, I can't wait for the sale of David Jones. I must buy them when they come out. You know, so I knew it was never going to work for me to, to, to spend the amount of money that they were willing to give to me. And as I said, I was a bit surprised by that because I'd been brought up with my father and my mother saying to me, 30% of your wage goes to your mortgage, 30% goes to your savings. Again, I have never made that one. And 30% you spend on your living expenses. So I, I went back and I, and I bought this and I, and I bought this unit and subsequently spent $30,000 on it because I can't live in pink. I'm not a pink person. Uh, I don't think anyone, oh, actually, you could have lived in there. Okay, it was suitable to be lived in. Um, I went through, I renovated, I've painted it, I've changed the doorknobs, I've, I've virtually got everything done that I wanted to get done um, to coincide with the Black Cell storm that came down in February 4, three years ago now, and, um, and then I had to redo it again. So, I mean, that's, that's my story. It's, as I said, I don't think it's special. I don't think it's different, but it did take me 18 months to find something that I could afford, you know, and I think that is what amazed me more than anything else. And I would go into block after block and even places that were hotels that had been converted into units, and it was still the basic price that, you know, I found I couldn't afford. And I, uh, you know, I have talked to friends and colleagues and I have a young lady who works with me at the moment as my, as my human resources coordinator. And she is in her mid-30s. Um, she and her partner moved to Canberra two years ago. They've been renting. Um, they are currently renting a, a two-bedroom unit in Braddon in a block that went up about three years ago. Their rent has just gone up $40 a week, um, which is 10%. Um, and when I said to her, oh, you know, my goodness, what are you two gonna do? Because that's 80 bucks a fortnight, you know. She said, what can we do? Our rental agreement says that our rent can increase up to 20% each year. And knowing that we gave a CPI increase, a good one of 2.8%, which is the, the average CPI over the last four quarters, um, you know, the 10% increase, by the time you put that on the price of the bananas that we're currently buying from Queensland and the peas from Victoria, you know, it's, it's made life extremely difficult for the two of them. So they've decided they're going to go job hunting. Uh, sorry, not job hunting. Oh, that was Freudian. They're going to go, uh, you know, property hunting. And they've done that on a semi-interested basis over the last few months. Um, and Secreti said to me this morning that she realises that they'll never be able to afford anything that's similar to what they've got now. Um, be, you know, and they don't want to live in a house, they want to live in a unit. But as she said, I can't afford 370,000 for a one bedroom unit in what is going up now. Um, and these are two people who don't have the, the, um, the incredible benefit I have of having parents who came down and helped me do it. You know, they're both, they're, they're both um, Australian citizens, but we're not born in this country. Their parents are, are overseas. Uh, you know, I'm damn fine with a, with a screwdriver and a, and a circular saw. Uh, you know, and I will, I will help them out. But I just think it's really difficult for people here in Canberra to realise that, you know, between 60 to 70%, if they can find something they can afford, they then, we are finding that the majority of us are then in what is officially called, you know, mortgage distress land, um, so that we can afford what we want. You know, and I didn't want a, I didn't want a palace. All I wanted was two bedrooms. And I've, as I said, I've, I've given up the second bedroom, but I've convinced myself now that I've been a bit blessed with a really large veranda, so I consider that my second room. So thank you for allowing me to share this with you.